Hi guys, so welcome back to uh, the Brand Tour YouTube channel. A uh, big thank you to everyone who subscribed and liked our last video. Um, one or two people have asked for information on the infotainment system, um, so we're going to go through that in a second. And you'll be really happy to know that we've bought a proper microphone, so thanks for the feedback. Thanks um, for all the complaints about how <laughs> crap our sound quality was. But hopefully this video will be better. Come take a look. Okay, so I'm going to briefly talk you through the controls of the car. I'm not going to go into too much detail, I just want you to see the function and what I've found I like and don't like at the moment. So you've got an old school handbrake, everyone likes an old school handbrake. You've got a gear lever straight out of a BMW, and then you've got your high and low range gear stick. This system here controls your infotainment system, or you can use the touch screen, it's entirely up to you. Going through these controls here, in the middle you've got an audio control, it's a little bit pointless because you, can, you can't really get to it because of the gear stick. So I don't use that, I use the one on my steering wheel and I'll talk to you about the steering wheel in a bit. So you can turn your start-stop function off. I have to say, I've been driving it for a week, the start-stop function hasn't worked once. Spoke to the dealership and they said you need to use the car on longer journeys so the engine gets properly warmed up before it will switch off. And as I've only been doing little journeys, that, that might be correct. You can also turn your park assist off, so they're your parking sensors. So if you are going off-road or you're hooking up trailers and stuff like that and you, you don't want it beeping all the time, you can turn that off. We've got the front and rear uh, heated windscreen, so that's a demister. Obviously, we're in May now, so I haven't had to use that. Hazard warning lights in the middle. And then you've got your climate control, so you've got air conditioning and you've got the recirculator. Obviously, if you're on a farm or whatever, you don't want those smells coming in all the time, so put your recirculator on. Seat heating, driver and passenger, push it on and then you can push it again. There's no spin or anything on that, it's literally just a push. And then you've got your temperature in the middle, where you want the uh, heat to go or cooling, and then you've got the fan uh, speed. So that's pretty pretty simple, and then you've got your usual sort of vents on, on here. So that's that's pretty straightforward, quite nice finish, very tactile, feels well built, solid, and I feel a lot of time's gone into this, and I, I really like this section. As we go up above, these are more sort of driving and lights. So these are your uh, internal and external options. Obviously, when you put them on, they light up. You've got your off-road mode and your wading mode. This turns off certain things in the car, um, if, if you're going off-roading and you're getting into it seriously, you'll know more about that than I do, so there's no point in me going into that. You've then got your traction control and your hill descent. Uh, Self-explanatory, you can turn your, your traction control off. Your hill descent controls your speed as you're going downhill. Uh, this is quite a good one. This is your external lights. So in the middle of the front bumper, you've got two lights. If you switch this on, when you go onto full beam, it puts your full beam on your main lights and those two middle lights on. Um, and it is bright. So if you're out, you know, in the fields or you're, you're on a country road, it lights the way very well. Uh, but you have to have that on. Uh, these are the internal lights and then the interior lights just, this is so if you open your car door, it switches on. Um, and then this is the whole system on or off. So th th this whole dash feels very good. Uh, I, I love this sort of cockpit feel to it. One thing I should say, not that it's important to me, there's no mirrors either side. So I say, most of you will slate me on this video saying, why do you want mirrors in a car like this? But I thought I'd point it out. Onto the steering wheel, you've got your nice little toot button, which is for your cyclists. This controls your volume for the stereo. You can skip tracks forwards and backwards and you can confirm your selection. Main horn in the middle, I won't do that because I'm in a bit of a residential area. Uh, and then this is your cruise control, so you can set the speed, you can then increase or decrease that, you can cancel it, or if you um, push the brake, it cancels it as well. And then you've got your telephone, and then this button here controls, so I've got an iPhone, so it controls Siri. So let's see if it works. Call Jim Radcliffe. Just to confirm, you'd like to call Jim mobile, no. <laughs> okay, I um, won't do it. To um, who? Uh, cancel. I have no idea who okay, that Jim is in I my won't. phone book. Uh, I thought it would say, we don't know Jim Radcliffe. But anyway, so that's the uh, steering wheel. I don't know if you can see this from there, but you've got your wiper controls. One thing I would say, I'm just going to grab the camera here. 
on the end of this is your rear wiper controls. Now my rear wiper came on, I'd obviously caught the switch. It took me ages to figure out where the rear wiper switch was. So uh, that's useful to know. And then on your left is your lights. So you've got automatic lights, which is what it's on. And then you can obviously go your main, your sides and off. And then the button on the uh, stick is for your fog lights. I think that's rear fog lights only. I don't think there's front fog lights. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's right. Let's go on the infotainment system then. So on the right, you've got your speedo, you've got your temperature, you've got your fuel, you've got what gear it's in. So if I knock that down into drive, you can see it's in first gear. Um, you've then got the amount of miles you've done. So I've only done 107 miles. And then it, on the end of the left gear, um, not gear, on the, um, whatever it's called, toggle switch, you can push that in and it'll bring up different information. So your add blue remaining range, how far you've driven on this journey, your remaining range, uh, how long you've been driving, and then your current fuel economy. Um, average speed, average economy. So it's in gallons and uh, miles per gallon and uh, whatever that one was. Uh, obviously I'm stationary, so my average is zero because I'm not going anywhere. Um, getting on to the main infotainment system, You've, the controls down here are the same that are on the uh, toggle switch down on the center console, but I'll use here. So if we go into off-road, it brings up different options here. So I don't know why it's called attitude, but um, this shows you the uh, sort of sway of the car. This is faulty at the moment. Uh, there is an update for this. Um, so I'm not gonna go into this with too much detail. Uh, if I go back very slowly, there we go, then we've got temperature. So this shows you the temperature of the, each tyre and obviously tells you um, the pressure in each tyre. Pathfinder is if you're going off-road, they explain this to me, um, so if you're going off-road you can drop markers and then it'll help you find your way back. That's what I understand. I thought when I was ordering the car, it was sort of a, an off-road navigation system, but I've been told it drops markers so you can find your way back. Some of you might want to comment and update me on that because I'm not 100% sure on that. Then it'll give you some statistics, longitude, latitude, your height, travel distance, average speed, average fuel, gives you everything from the journey. Uh, and then you've got electrical, which is about the battery. Again, I, I don't really go into all this. I think if you're, if you're really into your off-roading, you'll enjoy this a lot more. Um, but for me, um, I, I don't know enough about this. So again, if you want to comment and, and update me, that'll be great. So uh, we've got the phone, which obviously has all my contacts. Uh, we've got audio, Get it on the which is, is on the radio. Let's turn that down. Uh, so you've got DAB radio, you can go standard radio, um, and then Apple CarPlay. So this is what I use, this is what I've got. So this is my satellite navigation system. It uses Google Maps. You can input it on the phone. You can input it on here by clicking search. Uh, you can also do it using the Siri function. Then I've got music. So this is my uh, Spot Spotify. Uh, I can click on whatever I want. Chill mix, click shuffle play. Turn the volume up. And it, it plays. This the sound quality is actually really good. Uh, I don't know who makes the speakers, but I think the sound is uh, is pretty good. So that's that. And then the telephone. Uh, as I said, you can control the telephone uh, from Siri from your. Um, there you go. I just got a text right on cue. Um, and then settings. You can uh, connect new phone. One thing I would say is if uh, if you're not using Apple CarPlay, you need to go into this setting and go through your Bluetooth and it will just bring up the phone and load all your stuff from the phone. But if you're doing it from Apple CarPlay, which is I think what most people probably will, it'll bring all your, your contacts and everything up in here uh, and your apps. Um, so if I go on this one, then you can see here, this is your standard Apple CarPlay setting and you can go into to different things on here. I haven't been into INEOS, let's see what that does. Oh, 
That's very unexciting. Uh, and then the last one is your settings. So on here, I'll scroll through from here. You can update your display, vehicle functions, acoustic settings, communication, uh, Pathfinder file transfer. So I guess you can load in Pathfinder uh, waypoints. Um, again, you can control loads of different functions of the, of the car. Um, one thing I would say, and it's really the only thing I don't like about it, is because your speedo is here and not in front of the steering wheel it means this screen is quite small you can't make this screen the full size so if you look on other luxury vehicles they'll have a big screen in the center console which could be your whole map it could be could be anything you wanted it to be whereas half well not quite half maybe a third of the screen is taken up by your speedo um, it does give you nice visibility for when you're driving I personally would rather have my speedo in front and have this whole screen for the infotainment. Um, I hope I hope that helps. It gives you a little insight into the car's features. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. Um, hopefully the microphone has worked this time so we don't get hundreds of people complaining about how bad our sound was. And um, thanks for watching.